father, my uncle and my sister, my older sister. They've been living there for the past 21 years. The last time I saw them was only when I was two years old. My family have been residents in Iraq during this time and have no problems, have had no problems in Iraq till January of this year when the Americans passed the security of the camp to the Iraqi forces. From January till now this year, the Iraqi authorities have done everything in their power to make his life as difficult as possible for my family and the residents of Camp Ashraf. For example, they've restricted the entry of food and medicine into the camp. They've blown up the water mains that supply fresh water to the camp and many surrounding villages, home to many other Iraqi civilians. As you know, in July of this year, the unarmed residents of Camp Ashraf were attacked brutally by 2,000 Iraqi police and military forces who claimed they were camp to build a police station. These police were armed with sickles, axes, electric batons, tear gas, and live ammunition. The scenes which have been filmed by the residents of Ashraf were identical to the scenes of the streets in Iran after the recent sham elections of the Iranian regime. The attack was a direct violation of human rights of the Camp Ashraf residents who have been living in peace and harmony for well over 25 years. This attack was carried out at the behest of the Iranian regime in response to months of protests on the streets of Iran. As you know, the Iranian society is in an explosive state and the uprisings has nothing to do with the factions of the, Iran of the regime of the election itself. The people want a regime change. The people have are now chanting death to the dictator and death to Khamenei. The regime in Iran knows that has lost its, foot, its foothold in Iran and the Iranian people will not give up until the regime is um, uprooted in its entirety and this is why our struggle now is greater than before. Despite the atmosphere of heightened repression, Iranian youths are ready for change as have been seen in the recent nationwide uprisings. Last year, Iranian students, teachers, workers, and women took part in over 7,000 anti-government demonstrations. Iranian parliament in exile, the, Ira the National Council Resistance of Iran, and its president-elect, Ms. Maya Majadi, have urged the international community to, st to support the Iranian people in resistance to bring about democratic change. Hello everyone, good morning. I would like to talk to you about my life experience in Iran. I fled Iran six years ago. I was a student at Tehran University. Uh, student life should be fun, but in Iran, students uh, student have a harsh time. They can't do anything else besides studying. On 18th of year, uh, 1988, I was in uh, Tehran Street. I saw uh, all the uh, attack to students. Uh, I saw that how they throw students through the window uh, and uh, how they uh, beat a student uh, till they die. Uh, when I saw Ashraf, uh, Ashraf attack video uh, on 28th of July, uh, it reminded me all the um, all the attack they did in Iran in Tehran streets. Uh, it was very similar. They used similar weapon. They uh, used uh, similar uh, attack to uh, Ashraf uh, sit, uh, residents as they did uh, with uh, Tehran uh, students. Two of my uh, cousins they are living in uh, Ashraf and. I'm uh, really worried about them, and uh, my mother is on hunger strike in London, um, and uh, we will support Ashraf uh, residents till uh, U.S. take the protection of Ashraf. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as an Iranian student in London, uh, I would like to declare my solidarity with the youth of Iran, in particular the women who have shown such immense courage during the recent uprisings in Iran. As an Iranian who keeps a close eye on the disastrous human rights violations in her homeland, I was humbled by the sight of young women pouring into the streets of Iranian cities 
all across Iran to say death to the clerical establishment who has committed such grave human rights violations over the last 30 years. It goes without saying what the young men and women in Iran are faced with every time they go out onto the streets. One only has to go as far as YouTube in the comfort of their own home to see the kind of brutality that they must withstand, just to demand the freedom that's rightfully theirs. Many of the people who were arrested, just like Tarana, they are still in prison, and God only knows what treatment that they are being subjected to. Luckily, as Iranians, we have the people in Ashraf to show us that despite such horrific treatment, the Iranian people's spirit won't be broken. The courage of the residents of Ashraf is intertwined with the steadfastness of the protesters in Iran, and I pay tribute to the immense bravery of both of them, and I pray that soon the suffering will end and they will see the fruits of their hard work. Lastly, I'd like to say a few words to the parents of the young men and women who had disappeared during the uprisings after the recent elections. The mothers and fathers who line up outside Evin prison and other prison, prisons across Iran every day in the hope that they will hear news of their children. My, my grandparents did the same during the 1980s when their sons, who were members of the People's Mujahideen Organization of Iran, were political prisoners. They too suffered the pain that you are suffering. And I want you to know that young supporters of the PMOI across the world will tell your story to the world. Thank you.